Here's an interesting statistic that I read recently. A UK government report found that 22% of cyber sector companies employ staff who lack the necessary skills needed. And 44% say their job applicants lack the necessary technical skills to do the job. It's time to change that. I'm excited to share with you a complete overview for my new course called the MyDFIR SOC Analyst course that is expected to be released on June 10th. But before I begin, my name is Steven, and I've been in cybersecurity for over five years now, working specifically within the security operations domain. I went from being a SOC analyst to now a DFIR consultant, and I've been in the weeds or in the trenches, as some may say, until this day, I absolutely love it. This course is tailored for those who are interested in security operations and are looking to break into cybersecurity as a SOC analyst. It is not a beginner-friendly course, but you can still take it if you choose to do so. I mean, it is yours for life after you purchase it. If you're an existing SOC analyst, this course would still be beneficial as you'll get to learn how to ask better questions, investigate using all sorts of different telemetry, and build up your engineering skills with the five exclusive projects. For those that are new, will you be getting a job after taking the course? Probably not. I can't guarantee that, but you can bet that you'll learn some new skills and have some pretty advanced SOC projects at the end to show for it. I'll be there every step of the way to make sure that you do succeed in not only the course, but also in the job market. The price is going to be $4.99 USD plus tax. And trust me when I say this, if you're not in the financial position to purchase the course, please don't go out of your way to purchase it. You can instead continue to learn through my free videos here on the channel and follow the projects that I've created. This is also a great way to see my teaching style if you are on the fence to invest or not. But regardless of choice, I am here to provide you with guidance and assistance so you are never alone. This video is going to be on the longer side of things because I want to show you everything that I will cover in this course with full transparency. That way, you can ultimately decide if you want to purchase the course or not. With that being said, let's start from the beginning. This course will have a total of eight chapters, starting with chapter one, introduction. This will be all about how you can get the most out of this course and what you can expect. I'll also provide you with links that will help you in the course and when you're working as a SOC analyst. Chapter two, refreshers. This chapter will be broken down into six subchapters starting with cybersecurity, network, DNS, email, Active Directory, and the cloud, focusing specifically on Azure. Now, why Azure? Because this is most commonly used from my experience. For these refreshers, I'll go over the important concepts and terminologies that you should know and hopefully recall from previous training or education. The main objective here is to refresh your understanding and memory. Now, if you're new and have never been exposed to these topics before, I am sure that you'll get a lot out of this chapter. You get to learn the ABCs of cybersecurity, go through some subnetting exercises together, learn how DNS and email works, and how SPF, DKIM, and DMARC helps with email security, along with learning what Active Directory and how the cloud works. Next is General Lab Setup. We then move on to the general lab setup portion of the course. This is where I'll provide you with video walkthroughs on how you can get set up for the course labs. This includes creating virtual machines in both VirtualBox and VMware, and setting up software such as Splunk, Wireshark, Zeek, and Suricata. I have created pre-built virtual machines that you can import using VMware that will contain all of the configurations that are needed for the labs. And it is up to you if you want to use these pre-built virtual machines or not. But this only works with VMware. If you don't want to use VMware and want to use VirtualBox, for example, that is perfectly fine. I included how to set up these virtual machines from scratch. Chapter number three is understanding the SOC. I'll introduce you to what a SOC is and what are the roles and responsibilities for many SOC environments, and what are the common tools and technologies that you will likely see and use in a SOC. Then we start our first walkthrough, and I'll be showing you an overview of Splunk and how to get started with Splunk. We'll discuss 
fields, sources, source types, and essentially how Splunk works. Keep in mind, a tool is just a tool, but I chose Splunk as that is quite popular for many real-world environments. Next, we resume our theory portion, and I'll go over some of the common attacks that you observe in a SOC, what a typical MSSP SOC environment looks like, and what a dream MSSP SOC environment would look like. Afterwards, we'll continue with the walkthrough for Splunk, where you get to learn how to create your own SSH and Windows event dashboards, alerts, and reports by following a guided walkthrough, both video and text. Finally, you'll get to perform your first couple scenario labs. These scenario labs are built to mimic real-world environments, where you are tasked to create your own dashboard, alert, and report in Splunk. Chapter number four, frameworks. I'll introduce you to frameworks that will help you as a SOC analyst when it comes to investigations. This will include some incident response frameworks, Lockheed Martin Cyber Kill Chain, the MITRE ATT&CK Framework, and the Pyramid of Pain. During the MITRE ATT&CK portion, you'll get to do an exercise where I'll provide you with an IR report, incident response report, and you are tasked to pick out the main points and map them to the MITRE ATT&CK Framework. Chapter number five, open source intelligence. I'll show you what is possible with OSINT and why it is important whenever you perform investigations. I'll introduce you to some of the available tools and similar to chapter number four, I'll provide you with an exercise where you will receive an alert for suspicious activity. You will then be tasked to perform OSINT and provide as much information as you possibly can for that particular alert. And then chapter six, Art of Investigations. This chapter has seven subchapters and is the meat of the course where many would find the most interesting. I can almost guarantee that you will learn something new if you haven't already in the earlier chapters. I begin showing you what makes up a great investigation, how you can start to triage and perform analysis, and I'll show you how you can start to develop and ask better questions. We'll go over the importance of data sources and introduce you to the benefit of timeline analysis. I'll then walk you through on how to create an investigation report, how to create better case notes, aka notes within a ticketing system, because trust me, you'll want to have good case notes. And then I'll provide you with a structured process that then you can take away and apply immediately. Lastly, you will be presented with an advanced lab. These advanced labs are optional, but they are for you to practice what you learned and will help you level up your hands-on skills. Advanced labs will not have a video or text walkthrough. Instead, you will be tasked with a deliverable such as a report and recommendations that you will send to me, and then I will review your work. I did it this way because I want my students to be superstars in the SOC. You aren't here to just follow guides and get through the course. You are here to learn and get the most out of the course. We then move on to chapter 6.1, which is the first subchapter, and this will cover investigations related to emails. I'll provide you with investigation tips and questions that you can ask yourself whenever you're performing an email investigation. You'll have a total of three labs. Two are labs that will provide video and text walkthroughs, and one is going to be an advanced lab where you will send me a deliverable. I'll also provide you with a list of bonus email analysis tools and walk you through on how you can utilize them and install them to help you in the future. Chapter 6.2 is identity. Similar to the email chapter, but with more focus towards the identity portion. I'll first go over business email compromise and then domain user account compromise. While providing you with actionable investigation tips and questions to ask yourself, during an investigation. You'll have a total of three labs. Two of them will have a video and text walkthrough, and one is an advanced lab where you will perform a timeline analysis. Chapter 6.3, Active Directory. This subchapter will go over attacks at a high level that are commonly seen in Active Directory, and I'll provide you with detection opportunities. Now, currently there are no labs for the subchapter because spoiler alert, Many of these attacks are actually pretty difficult to detect and will generate a lot of false positives, but I'll likely have something in the future. Chapter 6.4, Network. This is gonna be a fun subchapter as I'll be discussing NetFlow, PCAPs, TLS, and JAW hashes. 
And yes, there will be an investigation tips and questions that you can use. There will be a total of 11 labs and one of the labs is going to be a scenario where a client reported that their computer was acting strange and had provided you with a PCAP. You're tasked to understand what happened and what are the next steps and recommendations are. As mentioned previously, Scenario Labs will have both a video and written guide to help you if needed. There will also be an advanced lab where your skills will be put to the test as you will be providing me with the deliverable. Chapter 6.5, Malware. It is time to play with malware. I'll introduce you to basic static and dynamic malware analysis. You'll learn how to investigate common file types such as PDFs, Office documents, JavaScript, and portable executables such as EXEs and DLLs. I'll also walk you through on how you can tackle basic obfuscation. There will be questions and investigation tips for each common file type and a process that I typically use when I investigate these. I'll introduce you to Yara and how you can build your own Yara rules. I'll also provide you with a video walkthrough on how you can set up a fully functional malware analysis virtual environment that can perform SSL interception and simulate services. This will include a checklist for you as well to review so you can always be as safe as possible before executing malware. And I guess now is a good time to say that I am not responsible for any damages. This subchapter will have a total of 19 labs. Five labs will be dedicated to building your own YAR rule to detect the malware that is found within these labs. There will also be a scenario where it builds on the scenario from the network subchapter. There is also one advanced lab where you will be tasked to send me a YAR rule that would detect malware found within a particular scenario. It's pretty exciting stuff. Chapter 6.6, Endpoint. Probably the most important subchapter in my opinion, as many organizations are heavily invested in EDRs. I'll be talking about Windows event logs, what are some of the auditing policies and useful log providers that exist. I'll go over how to read processes and we go over most of the tactics within MITRE ATT&CK framework, starting with execution all the way to impact as it relates to Windows event logs. What this means is that I'll provide you with some of the common techniques that I commonly observe in past incidents, what data sources you will need to help detect some of these techniques, and the most important, what are some actionable investigation tips that you can use for each tactic to help you identify potential evil. This is a subchapter where you should take notes if you weren't already. There will be a total of 14 labs and there will also be a lab for each tactic. One scenario where you're tasked to investigate strange activity on a user's computer. Now this is going to be a difficult scenario, so I do recommend that you do take some breaks and afterwards, there will be an advanced lab where your deliverable is to provide me a timeline analysis. Chapter 6.7, Threat Hunting. I'll introduce you to threat hunting. What are some of the common methods and a quick overview of the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. And I'll also be introducing you to Sigma rules and how you can start building them, similar to Yara. There will be a total of 13 labs and although majority of them are walkthroughs, the objective here is to have you follow along and by the end, hopefully, you will start to learn how it all works. Nine out of the 13 labs will be building Sigma rules together and one advanced lab where your deliverable is to create and send me a Sigma rule for a particular lab. There will also be a walkthrough where I'll show you how you can build a pretty neat drop-down dashboard within Splunk that will help you and other analysts going forward. Chapter 7, Job Readiness. This chapter will focus on getting you job ready. What you can do right now to help you stand out from the competition. We'll go over blogging, resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, interview preparation, and many more. Remember, in the beginning, I said I want you to succeed not only in this course, but also in the job market as well. And this is where I hope I can do just that. Chapter 8 is what's next. In this mini chapter, I'll provide you with resources that you can use to stay updated and where you can start practicing your skills because, hey, 
Cybersecurity is truly dynamic and things can change quite often. We as defenders must try to be one step ahead of the attackers and the only way to do that is to learn and improve our craft. That is it for the 8 chapters and I'm pretty biased but there are a ton of value in those chapters. And after you complete them, you aren't done with the course yet. You will then move on to the final capstone. The final capstone will have over 1.2 million events along with a large PCAT file that is roughly 8 gigs in size for you to analyze. In fact, here's the capstone scenario. The SOC received a call from Stephen Chan who is the CEO of Maple Accounting. And he had mentioned that on February 14th, 2024, which is the day the whole company was heading to a retreat. During the morning of, Stephen logged into their domain controller to do some last minute maintenance. And then he noticed a lot of encrypted files. He now wants the SOC to investigate and find root cause along with a timeline and recommendations. He is in no rush since he restored from backups already, but would like to reduce the chances of this happening again. He has provided us with a PCAP that his sensor was able to capture before it crashed. However, he isn't sure if there is any relevant data within that PCAP. You're the lucky SOC analyst who had just been assigned to perform a deep dive investigation for Maple Accounting. You must use everything that you've learned from the course to provide Maple Accounting an investigation report that will include recommendations along with supporting evidence such as screenshots and a timeline analysis. This will then be sent to me and I will manually review it. If it's not up to standards, I will then send it back to you with feedback and notes. I am here to create incredible SOC analysts that can hold their own so you can bet that I'll be pretty difficult when it comes to grading the capstone. But trust me, once you get through it, I am confident that you will be ready to tackle any SOC environment. Finally, after completing the capstones, you will then get your hands on the five exclusive SOC projects that can be quite advanced depending on your skill level. Project number one, you will set up and configure OpenCTI, which is a cyber threat intelligence platform, and then integrate that with Splunk. This will allow you to showcase your understanding of how things work together and why it's important to have that capability. Project two, Spin up Archimy and utilize it for PCAP indexing and searching. Honestly, it is one of the best go-to tools in my opinion when it comes to searching through many PCAPs. Project number three, create a honeypot for both Linux and Windows and then ingest that into Azure Sentinel along with creating logic apps which are playbooks. This project is not only modern but will impress a lot of hiring managers. Project number four, create a full detection lab. You'll learn how to set up proper logging on Windows servers, how to forward data from Zeek, Suricata, firewalls, and many other assets. By the end, you'll have a network slash endpoint monitoring environment that will mimic a small to medium sized business. Imagine talking about that during an interview. Project number five, Splunk SOAR integration. Since Splunk is quite popular, I thought to show you how you can integrate Splunk SOAR with Splunk and how you can create playbooks that will perform automated response. I know that I am repeating myself, but I am here to create incredible SOC analysts and I want to help you succeed in the job market. With these exclusive projects, you will definitely impress hiring managers. I can almost guarantee that. This is going to be an action-packed course, but please do not feel that you need to purchase this course or any paid course for that matter to become a SOC analyst. You can always look into free resources that are out there, such as the content listed on my YouTube channel. But if you're interested and in the financial position to do so, click on the link down below in the description and join the waitlist. I'll be sending a special offer near the release date via email. Just remember, no matter what you choose to do, I'll be here to help you along the journey. You are never alone. Because in this community, we do things differently.